You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. The wheel is turning and it can't slow down. You can't let go and you can't hold on. You can't go back and you can't stand still. If the thunder don't get you. Hello and welcome back to my wheelhouse. I'm your host Seamus, joined again by Uncle Mike. What's going on, Mike? How's your Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was good. I'm uh, great to have Sloan back. I just want to say. A big wheelhouse, a happy Thanksgiving to Biddy's, and I hope him and Boogie had a real nice Thanksgiving. I'm sure they did. I'm sure you enjoyed Boogie's company. Biddy and Boogie. Yeah, that's I like right. It. Sloan, how was your Thanksgiving? Good it was time. really good. good. We had Chinese food. It was unorthodox. Very unorthodox. But still but good. Hey, I mean. Any <laughs> leftovers when you have Chinese food? Or is it no, like they're always leftovers. Long gone. Long well, I don't gone. know. I'm not a Chinese food guy. Well, I feel maybe like Chinese food is. why it fits on Thanksgiving. That might be the so most frequently so leftover food. After, after eating it, might that's be Chinese food. By yeah. midnight, they were all gone. Yeah, okay. But that's well. the first and last time I'm, I'm I, doing I that. Good eats are good eats. I mean, go for it. Why not? Exactly. Uh, we got a lot going on in the basketball <laughs> stratosphere, or whatever you want to call it. NBA is uh, kicking into full gear. Everything matters now. No longer sample size small. Yeah, we're one quarter through the season. That's right. We're that's getting crazy. There. Everything, uh, dust has settled on teams that were overperforming or underperforming a little yeah. bit. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit. Obviously, we got college hoops to talk about. Uh, I don't know if you got anything else, but we can just get to the wheel if we, we're ready for it. Ready, set. Ready. Let's kind of like where the wheel's sitting. I hope it wasn't there right away. We'll see. Who knows? Unpredictable. Yeah, where the wheel stops. Oh, okay, so we're going to start with DeAndre Jordan and kind of a macro perspective on the Clippers overall. So after the Clippers yeah. started 4-0, you and were looking real good I, with your I, take. I, and yeah, since I was looking then, good, and now I'm taking And I, I deserve the abuse. I mean, I, I backed <laughs> up. I, I told you, I, I, the Kardashian factor was really bad. But, <laughs> man, I, I just have to take another chin from that. I mean, I, I, well, Blake Griffin is no longer a top-10 player. I mean, I, it's what happened there. Well, I, don't I don't know, know if he ever was a top-10 player. Doc Rivers is on the hot year. seat. They lose yes. nine games in a row. Beverly get in, gets injured. Ten of the last 11. They don't have much. And now DeAndre Jordan, I guess what? He's on a, um, an opt-out, and um, uh, he's going to be so he has available? A, so he has a player option next year. He's making like $22 million this year. He has a player option for $24 million. He'll probably take it, but he – and the organization are pretty commonly kind of seeing what's around. Like, I bet you DeAndre is looking at other teams. He hasn't requested a trade or anything yet, but it's obvious that the front office is trying to deal him somewhere no, to maybe turn it around. Is, up. is it really up? Yes, it's up, but it's still it putrid. It's no. not saying it's like, much. It's like oh, 40, I, think, I think it's like 49 right now. So but maybe him and Drummond went to the same coach or something. Yeah, I mean, I mean his career free throw percentage is like 38, so he's doing great in, in comparison to himself. So that's good. So this guy is a great asset. He's one of the five de best defensive players in terms of rim gravity and rim protection and he's in, in, his prime. in the league, and he's in his prime. So I wanted to gauge your guys' thoughts on where he could potentially go if a trade was to happen and if he should even be traded at all. Well, of course, we're hearing rumblings from the Cleveland beat writers. They're saying that they would absolutely take a run at him as soon as they heard he was available. Um, he's not available yet, but I think they would definitely enjoy his presence down low. Uh, LeBron that, would, an interesting thing. Because LeBron would love throwing uh, yes. alley oops Cause, cause to him. Because you got to figure that, um, uh, uh, that LeBron's out of there, and it, um, is, is that that's the game Kyrie played? I mean, wouldn't anybody in that situation be playing LeBron's gone uh, and? Uh, why would you come to Cleveland? Well, if it's you, only for one more year, I mean, it'd pr I, essentially be a rental. It could be one last go. When, yeah. You know, and he's, right. he's that, a that, power they, player. So. I think so you grab him for a half a season and uh, make a go at it. Um, I think the Cavs' perspective should be that you make a move that puts you in the best spot to win as much as you can while LeBron's there. Uh, they made there. a nice move. Did you see? So, uh, Shay, you saw the move they made this No, way. that's yeah. not a nice move. I don't, I don't, well, I, come on. Let's, let's be up front with this. So apparently, so hope, Denise, Mike's wife, sent me a picture of the TV, screenshot of the TV with London parentheses, like 16 people down on the bench. No. On the Cavs. He's standing in up uniform. And clapping. Ah, debatable. He has sweatpants and He's a sweatshirt on. I, I don't know if he has a uniform. London parentheses is a Cleveland Cavalier, everybody. He wasn't, uh, wasn't going to uh, get checked into and, the game. And I, I see. I think um, uh, he could be the next coming of Delhi. 
No. The uh, yes, he can. The only because reason. Um, Rose is out there talking about retiring or, or Who knows he what's can't wrong with him. Anymore. He's on the wheel. Who's now, the do you guy? mean Delhi with the, the bag well, over his head? Or <laughs> Delhi so like saying, you know, two years ago? Knee. I'm not buying the saw knee. He's pretty tough. He can play for the saw knee. I, I think Milwaukee's in disarray. And um, they, they blew things up when, when they shouldn't have blown things up. But back to London. I mean, I think London's got a spot there. Okay. I mean, I think LeBron, if LeBron likes him. I, he's going to he's going he's to get a shot because before Isaiah comes, they're weak at the point guard position. Let's face it; they didn't bring him up to. Um, uh, uh, they're weak at the point guard position because all of the point guards that they have are either hurt or not like playing up to par yet. So or as soon retiring. As, so I don't think Derrick Rose is going to retire. I think it's all a mental thing, and you know, once it's it's def definitely weighing on him that he's hurt. And I mean that's on the wheel, but we'll just touch on it now. Okay. He's 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 hurt, and it's clearly affecting him. And he mentally still has the concept and just the wherewithal that he thinks he's an MVP caliber player because that's what he was. Yeah. And I think he still has that thought process, and he still thinks he's a max player, and he's not at all anymore. So he's, yeah. he's not performing to his own expectations, and you can tell that's weighing on him. Maybe he's not that mentally strong I mean, so of a person. He was so good in Chicago. And so, um, what, a, what a level of play he was at. Right. He got hurt. That no was, one knows why he's not playing. It's literally just, oh, he's considering he's his basketball mentally, future. It's bothering him that he's, uh, that he's playing through the injuries all the time, and right. it's affecting his game, and he can't do what he wants to do. I think next time he gets healthy enough to play minutes, he's going to come back on a reduced role. Calderon will play more minutes than him. Calderon has actually played okay since they've uh, well, I've been adjusted all for him. Before and um, uh, I think um, I'm really, I'm just sad, happy. I'm not satisfied because I won. I just like that London Parentes has done that, that from nowhere. And I think he's going to get a shot to play. I hope it's tonight. I'm not. I'm not watching. Cle I'm watching Cleveland to play. I, I hope that, and they're playing quite well. And and, and um. Back on LeBron's side a little bit. We're not talking about them. We're supposed to be talking about DeAndre and the court, Right. So. That's, I mean, I think that once Isaiah comes back, London's off the team is what I was basically trying to say. But back to DeAndre, I think that any team that has any assets that sh would be looking to improve this year or next year should make a move for him. And I think that the Cavs are the perfect situation that I think they should. So? Uh, potentially. I think that they should throw out the, the, Knicks, uh, the Nets pick because that pick is going to be five, six, seven, maybe four of the, the Nets actually – completely crater out and more injuries happen to their better players. But that pick is not a sure thing. And you want your pick at five, six, seven to be sealing DeAndre Jordan. So if that's what your player you're hunting for, I think renting that player with the hope that maybe it persuades LeBron James to come back and stay and compete in Cleveland for more years with the potential of also re-signing this DeAndre Jordan superstar center at a lower cost after his deal the following year, I think that's a risk that you go after because that's going to bolster their so-called miserable defense that everyone is complaining so much about enough that they'll be able to be a factor later in the season and maybe contend against the Warriors, well, maybe contend against the Celtics. Well, that miserable seven games in a row. Well, that's because their offense is actually clicking and yeah. all their players and their roles are, are performing in the ways that they should be. Jay Crowder's uh, upped his performance a lot. Kevin Love is rebounding much better, playing more from start to game to end to game instead of much hot and earlier. Uh, J.R. Smith has upped his defensive ability. LeBron has uh, taken back, has been able to reel back in a little bit offensively. So you've seen yes, him more. Has. You've they seen had, him more prevalent on the defensive the end. Played well. He only scored 18. They had uh, nine guys in the team that scored at least seven points. The defense isn't the problem. It was the problem that the, all playing of their better? players. Exactly. It was all the players were playing Smith's under playing under own expectations and they weren't offensively clicking. With, but now that that's happening, it doesn't matter. With DeAndre, one thing defense. I like is the um, uh, the change in the um, uh, trade deadline. Yes. Where it's at 50 games instead of like about 50. 57 or yeah. whatever it was. It's a, it's a week earlier. And not, it's going to happen before the All-Star breaks. So, right. and, and that's what we're looking at here, right? And, and I think I like that a lot better. That, that kind of defines the first half of the season, the second half of the season, so much better than after the All-Star break. Do you have any spots that you can see DeAndre Landon? Now, I just have a question. If he's yep. at $22 million a yes. year salary, this year. could the Celtics absorb that large of a contract? So you have to match, trade, you you have to match salaries to 80% in any trade. So we would have, probably have to trade... Because they have the injury exception, which is 8.75. So we would have to trade the equivalent of, like, $14 million of salary. Oh, really? Which is kind of difficult for a little, the Celtics. A little less. Yeah. A little less. Maybe maybe, Where, maybe 10. Because we've got all our salary. 80%. In, um, 10. Not 14. 10. 10. I see I, him making the Celtics a lot better, but then I, I, I mean, you'd also have to probably trade Marcus Morris good, and good. Marcus Smart and mm. maybe one of the other yeah. kids. But at the same time. Yeah, Okay, or so at the same time, if, if a deal was Marcus Smart, Marcus Morris and 
A draft pick. Uh, the Memphis pick, or like some maybe not the Memphis pick because that's kind of a valuable pick. Maybe our own our own draft pick this year, or something like that. A pick that's like in the twenties, whatever it is. A first, a late first, whatever they project that to be. I think that's a trade that I'll be nervous to make because of how attached I am as a fan of the Celtics to Marcus Smart. But with the looming contract decision of Marcus Smart, I think I would much rather be willing to make it an extra step this season mm -hmm. towards penetrating into the finals and making a run at Golden State, and then next year making the same run but being so much more competitive with a Gordon Hayward added to DeAndre Jordan. And that adds so much more. We're, we're the best defense in the league right now. Imagine how much better that gets when we get rim protection, which is something our great defense doesn't really have. Yeah, well, I, at 18 and 3, I don't want to mess with it. I, don't, I, I agree. I, I want to stay with what's there. I agree. I, I mean, they've done a lot of shake-up. I mean, well, why give them another challenge with assimilating something else? I say go for it with what you got right oh, now. Oh, I agree. I'm not having any problem with Morris, and I'm not having any problem yeah, with Yeah, I don't Morris. think they're really in a I, position to try. I don't and, think that they will, but I'm, and I, I, yeah. I don't think I would do it based on what you said, but I think that in an uh, objective, objective manner, looking at that deal, I think that deal makes sense in terms of what our goal should be this season, next season, and what it would take away and what it would add for the team. That's the one piece they're really missing. Right. Yeah. Well, but well, you know what, I, and what I've been thinking, and you guys don't, and well, Shea doesn't agree, is that I'd like to see um, how good Joaquin Noah is and whether he is actually back to where he can play because he's nowhere, nowhere with, the, um, with the Knicks. I don't know whether that works out. And I'm wondering whether him and, and Horford are tight. Get him, I don't want him on Celtics. Get him out of here. Well, okay. if him and Horford are Joking. tight, and Horford tells everybody that I know you're thinking of Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, yeah. there was, there's a six eleven guy that's willing to play off the bench and willing to be a, a, a backup on the front line that I think defensively could uh, can possibly he's, still do a good he's job. He's also commonly known to be a big bonehead, like Marcus well, Morris level bonehead. Is Horford straightens that out. I mean, him and Horford played together in college and they won two national championships. Yeah, that if was Horford like nine says, years ago. a bonehead, then you don't do it. If Horford says, look, it, we're, I'm really good friends with I think, I think, I think you watch the Knicks a lot and I think you're going to see that, holy crap, this guy does not have it at all. Well, but he's not going to play. Yeah, he's going to play 12 minutes a game. He's not even going. He's not even dressing. He's not even going on road trips. So yes, why are we talking so about? So that's because he's not good enough. Because it's not because he's not he's getting a, better, a shot. I think he's a more a legitimate option than DeAndre Jordan. That's because, ridiculous. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, I know you say that, but I mean, I, I, I you know, that that's blasphemous. Like that's that's crazy. Well, I like blasphemous better than ridiculous. Okay, I'll say blasphemous from now on. <laughs> oh, we forgot to do this. It's preposterous. Mike, you won this one. I won again? Yeah. So you didn't you, you didn't even tell me it's no, four I forgot. three now. I forgot. I forgot. Mike has three wins. I have four. Ah. Sloan is yet to win. I'm so I, tr I try to make I up ground. I, I, got, I got a little screwed with that little tiebreaker that, that you sense. had. That made so much and ever sense. since then, did you, did you, I've been trying to make up ground. You haven't seen that show yet, have you? I'm coming back. So Shay asked I might not what, lose again this what year. What we're most thankful for for Thanksgiving? I love biddies. Biddies legitimately says the thing he's most thankful for for Thanksgiving is Demarcus Cousins. Okay, he's thankful. He's thankful interesting. For he's a good person to be thankful well, for. Biddies, this is and, nothing against him. And Shay's was it's uh, fun. I thought Shay put him up to it, and Shay said Joel Embiid, probably. No, no, I said stuff about like where I got my hats and my jerseys. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, we're talking about everything that's on the wheel. We might as well spin it again. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Well, I mean, I know we still we did a good job. DeAndre's connected. Yeah, we to did. The, we did. Oh, one thing before you spin it, I also think that a uh, uh, under the radar move that he could be landing, and another team that has poised to make another move is the Milwaukee Bucks, and I think that's a team that could really benefit from DeAndre Jordan's defensive style in terms of length, in terms of uh, switchability in the front court alone. And I think that he could help that team take that next step because that is the only question mark that I see left in their team. Maybe with a new coaching staff. Yeah, I it think just it, doesn't seem like they're reined they in over there. Grow. Okay, so when does if DeAndre Jordan gets traded, does Doc Rivers get fired? Is that like a hand in hand type thing that happens? I don't know. I, I don't really know how to figure that. He already I, got stripped I of his think power. That nine losses in a row eliminates them from the Western Conference. I mean, I mean, I don't think that they're in the playoff not, hunt, but I still think they're, they're in the hunt. a couple in a row now. I still think that they're, they're in the hunt. What, 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 the, 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 they, lost, they got kicked by the Knicks. The, uh, the underlying factor is that they haven't been healthy for any games and they're not at all. Be healthy though. No, I, exactly. That's season. that's the point. That Clippers fans are saying, well, as long Down as we get, as long as we can get healthy, we didn't but they them. don't realize that they've been saying that the entire Clippy, Clippers uh, generation, this Chris Paul, every single time that they get somewhere yeah. where they could be making an impact, someone gets hurt, and that's what that's what just second nature. I think they have to turn the turn the page on this whole. Era. And I think, I think that so includes too. letting him go. I think I think he's definitely just going. allowed. It doesn't even look like he he, he cares. No, at this point. No, it doesn't. Like if if they fired him, he'd be like, well, all right, thanks. Aren't they in a division that then? Um, well, who's the leader in their division? 
Well, they're in the same division. They're in the Warriors division. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. Well, but the okay. rest of the division's not pretty credible. They're playing. So, the, they're playing the Lakers they play tonight. Phoenix, right? They play the Phoenix Suns and the Lakers a lot too. You know. So, so, but but they're, no, they're not in the Warriors division. The Lakers are in the Warriors division. The, you don't think the Los Angeles Clippers and the Los Angeles Lakers are in the same I'm division? I'm looking right now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> this, going, is not like, the, this is not like the, the NFL. The Lakers have got a better record than they do. <laughs> yeah, the Lakers might All right, be, we're spinning. Yeah. I, the, the, the Clippers will finish better than the Lakers at the end well, of the year. While Mike figures out Seven that LA is wins in a row. next to LA. Uh, Gasol? Yeah, we'll really? talk about Gasol and the Memphis Grizzlies real quick. So, so there's, a, there's the top losing streak in the league right there. Yeah, so I, I definitely thought that that was a lot of hoopla in the beginning of the season. Everyone talking about, oh, this Grizzlies team taking down the Warriors, taking down the Rockets, not really reading between the lines, seeing that this team is depending too much on 32-plus year old stars between Conley and Gasol, both very injury-ridden and injury-prone players yeah. in a very deep team with just unproven players besides that. So the, the, the only player that is a bright spot on that roster right now is Tyreek Evans, who is a bit of a reclamation, uh, a little bit, uh, is an exciting story so far this year, and he's been playing great. But everything else on that team just shouts that they are falling, 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 plummeting to the and bottom five in the concert. Back, done, you know? So the thing that's interesting is last night they played the Nets. They lost to the Nets. Marcus Gasol was benched for the entire fourth quarter. And if you watch the game, Marcus Gasol gets up, you, right around the time where he's usually sub, deck, sub, sub back in because Fisdale usually brings in the starters at like seven or eight minutes. Uh, it's typically the way his rotations work with the starters. He, Gasol gets up around like the five minute and goes and like says something to Fisdale and then shakes his head and walks back to the bench. And I don't know what's going on, but the, after the game, Gasol had a lot of unusual comments about the thing. And he said, I, I think that they knew that keeping me on the bench would hurt me more than it would hurt anyone. And I don't know why they did that. I don't know what message they're trying to send. And I don't want to say anything, but okay. I, I can tell you that I'm angry. And it was, it was like he... Gasol's been, playing, Gasol's been playing well, too. He's been playing... He, it's, it's slowed down a little bit, but he yeah. has been playing very well. But, I mean, that's... I think Gasol's a good player. and It's not crazy. He hasn't been playing above his performance level because he is this borderline all-star player. But it's interesting because the Grizzlies are in a similar spot as the Clippers where... If one or two things go wrong, maybe Conley's injury lingers a little bit longer than expected. Maybe Gasol is really, really upset. They could ship off Gasol for whatever assets they could get now rather than holding him and trying to trade him later where his value is much lower and try to get into a rebuild process. What do you think about the Gasol situation? It, it just seems like there's something a little bit more personal between yes. him and Fisdale. So it, it was Clearly, because I mean, they were down by 17. You take him out with three or four minutes left in the third quarter, right. and then... They never got to within six or seven points after that, and he never played the fourth quarter. They it doesn't make any sense back. at all. No. It's a three-time All-Star, and he, he was trying to be, you know, okay with it, but how could they not put him back in? No, it's and very they, usual. And he's like, I'm just not – clearly I'm not being valued. And no, clearly, not, exactly. You know, clearly they're, they're – he's trying to say that my talents are not, um, you know, not going to bring anything to the table for the fourth quarter. It doesn't make any sense to me. I agree. I he's know. got such a strong history there. I can't believe that he's not valued. You know, um, uh, maybe he, the coach gave up on the game, which is also a problem. That's something to be angry about. That the coach figured um, how, how fourth quarter how to play out. I didn't see that game. Um, they um, lost by ten. They, 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 I mean, they you don't think they would have they, come they, closer they, if they, they had him they in? They kind of fought back here and there. Lake Sloan said they never really came back more than like within six or seven points. But that's, you could tell once, once they got to that point, that's the point where you should be putting your, your starters back in and you should be making a run to win the game. But what is interesting is it's they, these two guys, Fisdale and Gasol, have a history of not seeing eye to eye. This is the second year here, Fisdale. And last year when yeah. he came in, he went to Gasol and it was, it was known that he went to Gasol and he said, I want you to take a more uh, stronger leadership role with this team. I need you to be more of an outspoken leader. I need you to take players under your wing. I want you to do this. It's nothing out of the normal for a coach asking of his best player or second best player, depending on how you view Conley, um, in how they interact with teammates and how they perf perform and carry themselves on the court and off the court. And Gasol isn't that type of player, isn't that type of leader. He's more of a... He's reserved. A, he's, he's yeah, he's reserved and he's guy. a do as I say. I mean, do as I do, not as a do as I say player. And he didn't agree with that and, he, and they, they kind of had a... I forget what it was, but there was a lot of stuff going on in the media for like two or so weeks where you could tell that they were having a lot of disagreements. And there w it wasn't anything this big with a benching for the entire fourth quarter and like clear statements where they're coming up against each other. But it was like every once in a while there would be a little like stab at the other person. So I, I don't know that this summer 
uh, Fisdale flew out and went to Spain during one of his camps, and they spent like a couple weeks together, and apparently that patched everything together. But maybe that was just a small Band-Aid on a bigger problem, and maybe Fisdale is going to be the one that leaves if the organization values Gasol more than hey, the actual team. you said? Gasol? Gasol, yes. Yeah. Okay. He so, was a Defensive Player of the Year a few years ago. Shouldn't have been. A great passing, <laughs> great passing big man. Oh, Three yeah. Time top, All-Star. Top four passing, passing big, big man in the league. He's got good footwork. I love Gasol. He'd be a great Celtic. Not He'd be a I'm fantastic Celtic. Uh, but, but it's interesting. But it's interesting because his value is very low. So I, I and, his value is low. Yeah. What are you What are you going to trade for a 32 year old yeah. big man whose uh, game is uh, contingent on being healthy? And he he just came off a big Achilles surgery. I think Achilles surgery a year and a half ago. And he's making a lot of money. He's going to be making uh, near near 29 million dollars in within the next three years so I don't, I don't know if i want to go near that and well enough of the grizz and the clips they can go down the tubes <laughs> uh, yeah they stink they're, they're put not, fizzdale they're not in the hot seat yeah. they're not in the playoffs right next to playoffs. doc rivers put well, him on the, the thing hot is, fizzdale is a good coach i was i was doing my coaching rankings and he's the top 15 oh. coach in the league all right so the oh, under 25 it. all-stars so this uh segment was prompted by i forget what podcast i was listening to but someone emailed in and asked them who would win in a game between the U.S. players under 25 versus international players under 25? Huh. So I just shifted that, and I did East versus West. You got to be 25 or under, so you can't be 25. What's the team and who would win? So I'll run through my roster, my starting lineup, and then you guys can do yours. But my starting lineup for the East is Ben Simmons at point guard, Kyrie Irving at shooting guard, Giannis Kyrie Antetok Irving's not under 25. Kyrie Irving is exactly 25. He, he is, huh? Kyrie Irving at shooting guard. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo at small forward, Chris Stapps at power forward, and Joel Embiid at center. Versus in the West, I have Dennis Smith Jr. at point guard, Devin Booker at shooting guard, Anthony Davis at small forward, Nikola Jokic at power forward, and Carl Towns at center. Wow, that, that's pretty much. And that's then I did the full benches too because I just. That's almost went, exactly uh, what I would have. Um, uh, I, I thought that. I thought Kyrie was 26, and um, uh, so I didn't have him on the bus. I, I think um, uh, Beal needs, needs a lot of consideration. Beal is my sixth man on the team. Okay, okay. Uh, that, that's, that's really the only change I, I would so have. So I actually so started, I actually thought, I agree, I thought Kyrie was 26, and I started, and you could see I have a cross out. I put Bradley Beal in my starting lineup, but okay. then I realized that Kyrie And, and the, uh, the thing I find more, I think I would have Beal in the starting lineup instead of Simmons, but I think mm, what's no. really interesting about Simmons is that um, uh, uh, as you look at, now there's a guy that's, 20 or not whatever he is Simmons is 21 yeah when i was even looking at this it really kind of defined how i see the rookies because nobody else came to mind other than simmons that's in that category the, right. the under 21 Tat tatum is my ninth player and, on so, the roster. Uh, and i said i think tatum might be the rookie of the year and, and, and obviously you got kuzma but simmons is the guy that you would that you would take on that under 25 and, and I, he was the only guy in that um, under 21 age group that i considered at all but almost exactly that same team. It's nice how they break down East and West because I think after those 10 guys, there's really not a lot of guys after that that are more, are more. So I'll, we'll talk about the bench players. Who do you got on your 5-5? Your five, your five, five. Do you have a 5-5? Five, five? Do you have I players mean, that you're thinking about? I think the craziest thing is the, the East. you got Embiid and Porzingis. Yeah. That would be insane. And Giannis. But and Porzingis Giannis. steps out so far. You know, almost, they might be able to play together. Now, I think he what's your backcourt? On the, ben Simmons the and East. Kyrie Irving. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, Mike is starting be. Bradley Beal. Yeah. So the rest, the rest of the players, uh, ba Bradley Beal, six man. Then I have Miles Turner, Andre Drummond, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Oladipo. Oh, you got to... Oladipo's a... Um, uh, I got... And then I got Tobias Harris, and then I got Marcus Smart. And you probably got to include Jabari Parker. I have Jabari Parker on... Uh, just in the honorable mentions. I didn't put him in there because he hasn't he's played. Hurt. He's hurt. Yeah. Right? And I, ha I also had Zach Levine on there, but same thing. He hasn't, he hasn't played because he's hurt. And then in the West... I got Gobert. He's 25. That's true. Steven Adams, Wiggins, Joseph Nurkic. Steven Adams is only 25 too. 24. It looks like he's wow. about 40. Uh, yeah. Gary Harris, and then I have a four-way tie between Lonzo Ball, Jamar Murray, De'Aaron Fox, and D uh, Donovan Mitchell for the last spot on the roster. So it's it's. I'll actually take Donovan Mitchell out of those guys. That's yeah, okay. That's, that's that's why it's a four-way tie. <laughs> um, so it's interesting because I think if you so compare you're starting these, Devin Booker and I'm starting Devin West. Booker and Dennis Smith Jr. So if you if you look at these lineups and you just project it's them and, and, for, and for what they yeah and for what they mean for the future of the league, in just a macro aspect, I think the East has a brighter future than the West. 
if all these players are staying in the same situation. If you just look at a starting lineup, obviously Anthony Davis, Jokic, Towns, Gobert, that's a pretty big four. But if you look over at the Simmons, the star power and the maximum ceiling for Ben Simmons, Giannis, Porzingis, and Embiid is much higher than it is on the other side. And I think that this 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 yeah. lineup over here, that's that's four potential MVPs, five if you include Kyrie. And I, I don't know if you can say the same about what's in the West. So I think so that I really bodes well. For Adam Silva. Give me something. Um, uh, why don't we come to reality with the um, All-Star game and understand that the guys over 25 really don't want to play and then make it under 20. Look at that game. That would be an awesome game. And they probably would. They compete. would try. They, would they try. probably would really play because then they, once you get over that age, they don't, they don't really want to put it on the line anymore like the old players used to do. So why well, have They already the do like a futures game. Which it's is not like really a futures game. These guys are established. You're talking the second Anthony years, Davis right? and Omar, oh, you're talking established players. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a little different, though, because you, the players aren't established enough where they have enough of a reputation where them competing makes a difference. I, and, and more often than not, there isn't defense played because it's very lighthearted because <clears> it's, <throat> oh, we're just first and second year players. I think if, what, like you say, if you added in some players that have stuff to prove that are in their third and fourth years, that are all considered stars, that are on borderline uh, superstar potential top five players in the league that are this young, where you can attract that interest that wouldn't really be there with the other way. I mean, obviously Giannis I mean, everybody wants and to Porzingis. See the star. I mean, wants so, to see a lot the of these guys are all all stars anyway. Yeah. But having these young players be the, more of the focal point rather than just an accent to a game that includes. Uh, Durant and Curry and LeBron would say a lot about the game. So I, I, I think that so, it would be interesting if you so did. play LeBron the first five minutes and then sit them down That's and, what play, I was gonna and say. play the under-25s the rest of the way. I think it would be go interesting. one half with the old guys and one half with the under-25s, and we might see something that would be enjoyable. I'd love to see that game. I think that would be a great game. I would take the East is like it was what oh, I was going to say. The East, I think the East would destroy the West. I don't know. I you don't think know. Dennis Smith, you think think Dennis think Smith and Devin uh, Booker think, could handle Ben Simmons and Kyrie Irving well, and Bradley Beal? Anthony Davis and Jokic are nice, and Towns are a nice front line. Giannis. Beautiful. I don't see why Smith can't compete with them. Um, uh, um, uh, well, Kyrie, that's not, that, those are good guys. Dennis, I, I Dennis Kyrie, Kyrie and Giannis, Embiid, and Dennis Porzingis. Smith, Dennis Smith and Devin yeah. Booker could not guard Ben Simmons and Kyrie Irving. That is I, I don't know. Slack. It would be a very exciting game, and it's something maybe I'll fool around in my uh, 2K video game later, but it's uh, all but a pipe dream for now. And, yeah. I mean, we can we'll wish for something We'll see where that like All-Star game goes this year. If it's another one that even comes close to last year. Mm. They need to do something. I'm very curious they what they're they going to try. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But the future is certainly bright, though. Yeah, like you said, they don't I mean, want to embarrass themselves to that level. I think the know. NBA has the brightest future out of the four. Oh, easily. Sports, it's not even close. For sure. I mean, it's exciting to look yeah, at it and, and having the departure, or n not yet. We're still five or six or seven, maybe even ten years away from when LeBron James leaves the league. But from the from the time where LeBron is the dominant player and he's the alpha male, um, the overlord of the league, or whatever you want to say. The, the, tr the transition is looking brighter and brighter, and we have a lot to look forward to as fans and uh, for a long period of time. Um, I, a lot of my favorite players are players on this list and uh, players that I'm going to be watching and following for a long time, and they're nowhere near as good as they're going to be. Uh, ben Simmons could be a top 20 player all time if everything continues the way it is. And be uh, probably more so than him. Uh, exactly. I'm, there's multiple players in this list. And I mean, look at somebody like Booker. Booker's 20 years old. Yeah, he's yeah, he's 20. Right? I think he just turned 21. He's turned 21. Like, like, th like a week ago or something like that. But yeah. Jok Jokic is real young too. All right? these guys. All, I mean, yeah, they're all under 25. All that's, 25. The point of, that's the point of the exercise. It's, yeah. it's, it's exciting. <laughs> so how many of these guys right now do you think are first-time All-Stars? First-time All-Stars? So Giannis has I'm, already been an All-Star. Porzingis is going to be a first-year All-Star. Embiid is going to be a first-year All-Star. Sorry, both those guys, I think, are going to start. So, I, oh, well, actually, I think, no. I think, no. like you said, all of yeah, Depot, all Depot is an All Star right yeah, now. Yeah, that's, that's that, he, I don't know if he's still going to be there when it comes around All Star time. I, I think that he's going to he fall back down a little. Up, he well, is the, pace, the Pacers aren't are going to decline a little bit. They're yeah. going to drop out. They're going to be more like the tenth or the eleventh seed. So, I, I don't really know if it's going to be such a necessity that because of the Pacers' performance that we need to give a player on that team and in addition to that, and he's performing Philadelphia, well. Philadelphia votes like crazy. Those fans on uh, uh, Ben they, Simmons. They ben Simmons. Simmons and ben there. Simmons is a lock. He's a, he's a lock to be in. He's He's, been, he's, he's a lock. He's a top, he's a top 25 player There's in the league. Somebody like Indiana and Dallas, they might not get as many votes. Avery Bradley is playing like an all-star right now. Yeah, but I mean, if a, a player comes from yeah, that team, it's, I think it's... expected to go long-term. Right, but if it's a player I mean, coming from that team, it's probably going to be Drummond or even Tobias Harris over him. Tobias yeah, Harris. I Tobias Harris, Harris has an all-star role with um, um, Bradley. I, I think it's just in terms of performance and how it's affecting a team's success, both of those players are attributing to it more than Avery Bradley. Obviously, I love Avery Bradley. Is he going to get a standing ovation in a video yeah, tribute? Uh, unbelievable ovation. So, yeah. 
he's going to get he's going to get his due. I'm so happy that he's playing well because I was worried about that. I was worried it wasn't going to be a good fit for him and that you know he might not be able to establish himself in Detroit. But everything's going so well for him. You got to you got to be happy for him. So some, something that I think Just he's like oh, we're all happy for London Parentes. You got um, no one's happy for London Parentes besides everybody's him. happy for so, London Parentes. So he's in the NBA. Yeah, that's oh, bad. He shouldn't man. be. So um, Avery Bradley, I think, has to get a tribute video. But if you look, the last like. Eight players. Oh, I Since don't think he's going to tri tribute. We think he's going to tribute. I, okay, well, he so could. There could be some good plays. And his block shot on Wade, right? Like we, he's uh, got tons of things. Awesome. Yeah, his yeah, his game winner that. that rattled in and around on Cleveland in the playoff game. He's, yep. um, so the players, since Avery Bradley was a Celtic for seven years, Paul Pierce, KG, Ray Allen, Perk, Rondo, Doc Rivers, Glenn Davis, Eddie House, Scal, and Tibbs all got tribute videos. So he has to get a tribute video, right? One hundred percent. But the he thing is, he was a quiet guy. I mean, he was respected. He was Scal's respectable. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's interesting about all those guys is they were all part of that championship team. So maybe, because yeah. seeing as he wasn't a part of the 2008 championship, maybe he doesn't get it. Obviously, he's going to get a standing I, ovation. I think they're going to do it just for the simple fact that they feel like they owe him something because of um, uh, the way I that mean, he happened. He gave so much, and his con contribution was so earnest. Yeah, he, he really put Everybody it. He put everything on the floor, you know. But I, but I would trade him tomorrow for uh, for Morris. I wouldn't trade him tomorrow. I would because I think uh, Morris brings. Well, I think they get away without Bradley. They're not getting hurt. Look no. at the best defensive team in the league. They're not getting hurt without Bradley and. And Morris brings something to the table yeah, that I he doesn't. I think we, I think he's still he's still down on Morris, huh? Yeah, his, his shot selection just makes me so queasy. And it's I, not I, his shot selection is is fine. No, it's not. No. Yes, it, well, I think it it's, is. It's and all, I think it's all Stevens over the place. says it is too. He's always square. Well, obviously, he, he Stevens uh, Ben. I don't, uh, I don't think Tatum would have emerged as much if we still had Bradley. That's the only thing. Minutes, the play, so. the situationally, you do that trade because you'd rather have a swing four player than a two player that's going to be logging minutes big too. where Jalen uh, Tatum. Smart and Kyrie will be playing. So that's the only reason the trade makes sense. Uh, straight up, heads up in a vacuum. Well, a you, you want Bradley over him every single time. I tell you what, I thought we were going to really miss him when we played Golden State. No. And then, I think uh, you just double talked. Well, okay. I mean, so, you, said, you said it makes sense to trade him, and then you said, um, uh, uh, except for that, I, think I would trade him every time, except for the thing that makes sense. I'm, okay, so what I meant to say was I like Avery Bradley way, 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 way more than Mark. Well, okay, but, but, but like, a, yeah, yes, and I like way, um, Bradley, but I don't want that getting in the way of who I think. You accuse you of pulling a Dan Shaughnessy. No, that's, that wasn't what happened, but I, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm not worried. What do we got? Oh, the first double spin of the day. I'm rusty. I guess so. Gave me a week off. It's spinning real well today, though. Yeah, thanks. Well, look how it's going. Wow. It's, it it's not spinning that well. well. I think you did it again. Yeah, it's going to be Grizzlies again. No, it's not. Third time that would be there. awesome no, if it is. No, it's not. I bet you it won't. Okay, we're going to do uh, nah, college hoops. Okay, go to college hoops. I like college hoops. All right, so. I, I love college hoops. To begin, I just wanted to focus on the top players. And I wanted to talk about how they may have separated themselves between others. Obviously, news came out that Michael Porter is going to be missing the entire season with back surgery. I'm thinking that's dropping him down to maybe the fourth slot instead of him being able to raise maybe his stock. Fifth. Yeah, maybe even the fifth, potentially. Yeah. So something um, just between DeAndre Ayton and Marvin Bagley, I think those two guys, along with Luka Doncic, I know I, you mm -hmm. probably haven't been watching a lot of him. He's doing really, really good. Uh, overseas, he's I averaging he's seventeen six. At number two right now. He's averaging seventeen six and five with uh, only a, un, under two yeah. and, under a one and a half turnovers a game and only twenty five minutes. He's an extremely efficient player and he, and he plays beautifully. And I think there's going to be a lot of arguments for me him to be the number one player. But Bagley and Ayton are really gunning for that number one spot. Both of them well, are playing out of their minds. Arizona's lost three in a row to unranked teams, but yes. Ayton is still. He's because he, I haven't seen those because, games, but because they've been losing. Whenever he's on the floor and he gets the ball, he I, dominates. He's, I, I at, he's averaging 21 and 12 with two blocks a okay. game. He's had multiple games uh, over 20 and over 10 rebounds where he's destroying his competition, put bat dunks, forceful rebounds, huge body, drop steps, moving people out of the way. And in transition, he's playing fluidly. And but they're I, getting beat by teams they shouldn't get beat by. The rest of their play, the rest of their teams aren't really uh, raising to, rising to the occasion. Alonzo Trier isn't playing that well. It wasn't playing nearly as, uh, as well as he was, especially in the tournament last year. So I think, I think uh, eventually a lot of his uh, teammates will rise out of the dust. And I like the coaching there, and I think they'll be okay. And I think DeAndre Ayton is making a case. Marvin Bagley, though, he has been losing he's his separating. mind. He's been losing his mind. He is separating himself, yes. especially he got 34 and 15 against Mo Bamba in that PK 80 game, and that was just a monster. However, however, a lot of his damage was done 
after Bamba yeah. fouled out. Yes, this is true. So that's right. to put that but, in but perspective. For the he but he played 80, well. He played well. Krzyzewski needs to work out of, yes. you know, yeah, but he had down low more often. 45 rebounds in the tournament. Yes. He had 30 yesterday against Florida. Oh, yeah. That was a nice 30 game. 30 and 15 Florida. against the Florida. He's a beast. He's a beast. I don't think Krzyzewski operates. I mean, these are his games. 30, 30 and 15, 34 and 15, was, 18 and 15, you know, 24 was, and 8, 19 and 11, 24 and 10, 25, 25 and 10. I was a little down on Bagley, but when I saw that's the first time I really watched him. I'm going to want to see Yaten play, too, but um, he, Bagley really looked good yesterday. Yes. He's running the floor unbelievably well. And uh, uh, one, one thing, he's got real long arms. Yes. And he's able to stay out of trouble with his arms, like so he doesn't foul as much, and he he, he can reach over the top for rebounds in a way that um, you don't really see players do. He also gets he's a good rebounder, a real mm -hmm. good rebounder, so and he gets way games. up on his rebounds. He, he sees he, he the ball, really yeah. Really elevates from a standstill up with real good timing on his rebounds. He had a strong 30 and 15 mm -hmm. uh, in a real tough game against Florida. Florida's an interesting team. They were averaging 102 points a game going into the, the game yesterday. Yeah, I don't care about Florida. Yeah, well, his no, confidence Greg, level, though, ba ba Bagley's confidence level is just continually going up. Yeah, he's and you, can just, you really could just throw the ball to, towards the top of the backboard, and he can jump up and grab it because he's got the ups, and like you said, he's got the wingspan. Yeah. How do you not just go through him it, almost every time? Something that both of you were touching on, but not necessarily. I, I think his coordination is unbelievable, yeah. and his hand-eye, his hand eye, He's and, far and, his, advanced and, over Mo and, his, and his timing is great. Yes, Mo Bamba, I love Mo Bamba. I'm very into like Mo Bamba, but Mo Bamba, Mo Bamba, shot that was his, yes. it was like he was playing volleyball. Right, he's very, very raw. He's a he's top, not 10. Strong. top 10 prospect. He's a top 5 prospect, and he's not, he's not strong enough yet, but it's going to get there, and this guy has defensive player of the year potential. He's averaging 4 blocks a game, 10 rebounds a game. He doesn't have that much of a scoring uh, touch offensively yet, but he, he, he has a game. He has a post game with, yeah. with hooks and, his and turnarounds. You, you, yes, you exactly. The difference exactly. between him and Bagley is his timing. Exactly. Like, you'll see him, uh, you know, he's, he's coming down when he's tipping a right. ball in instead of um, uh, 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 dunking it. And, they and got that, two overtime defeats. I mean, they, they had Duke on the ropes, and then they had Gonzaga on the ropes, and they're four and two. Um, uh, I don't know if Texas is that great of a team. I think he's really not. keeping them they alive. Almost, you know? Yeah, they almost won that game. I don't really like any and of the other as players. As good as we say, um, uh, Baggers, I mean, Duke almost lost twice, too. I mean, they, they, they were way behind. And Florida was up by um, 16 points with uh, seven or eight minutes to go. And Bagley had a great la um, uh, finish to that game last night. Grayson Allen's got to stay on the floor, too. I'm, I'm nervous that you are are attributing too much to player projection in terms of what the outcome of their team winning and losing is? Uh, what do you mean? I think you decrease uh, Aiton's potential because I haven't seen Aiton, so I can't. I can't but yeah, but I, I just but uh, yeah. in terms of a per, just your perspective, I think well, that if Bagley and Aiton, if you put up their highlight films uh, right side by side and they looked identical, and one player. Uh, maybe Aiton had a couple more advantages statistically, but Bagley had five more wins in the w win column. I think you would say Bagley is the clear better player, well, no, and I don't know if that's I necessarily I, true. I, I allow for that. I'm just all, all the only information I have on Aiton that's is true. his team has lost three in a row to okay. unranked teams. Okay. And so when I see that, and that's the only information I have, okay, I'm reasonable. saying maybe he's not playing that well. But I'm listening to no, you, he's, he's and I'm looking good. forward to seeing him play. I, I, I want to evaluate him what? because. Until I saw Bagley play, I didn't really know. I, I was saying, hey, he's all left, and he is all virtually all left. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't think he's a low post threat like you're, uh, like Sloan saying in that term. I think he's more of a four than a yes, five. Yes, he is. And I, and I said it a he while really ago runs. that if he develops his handle, he might even be a three. And that's something I said earlier, and that's something he could, he could get to. But a player I want to talk about that in my mind is rising up, I might even have him as high as six or seven on my draft boards now, is the point guard from Alabama, Colin Sexton. I don't know if yeah, you guys boy. watched this oh, game. It was unbelievable. This game was awesome. Never so, seen anything like that. So this yeah, game it hasn't been anything like <laughs> so that. So Alabama versus uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. It's uh, not that close of a game. Minnesota's up by 10 for the majority of the second yep. half. 12 minutes left. Huge ball breaks out. The entire Alabama bench comes off the bench, gets ejected. So Can't they're playing, do that. playing five against five. And then Alabama only has five players left. I this think it was 10 minutes to go. 10 minutes to go. One of their big gets uh, their fifth foul, fouls out four on five. Two minutes later, and in this time span, Colin Sexton is starting to heat up, and you can see him t starting to take over the game. You're going to get a lot he, of shots in this situation. He, he, o he only had 12 points in the first half only, but then he started to find a shot more. He started to take it to the rack. He was being more aggressive. Two yeah. minutes later, after his fifth player fouls out, 
one of the fourth player gets injured. They're playing three on five, and Colin Sexton loses his mind. <laughs> Colin Sexton hits. Like I said, with only three guys, there's not so many options. Back left. to back to back contested three pointers. He's getting yeah. triple teamed. He's scoring on triple teams with pick and roll. How do you read a pick and roll they, as a ball handler with Minnesota. three defenders they on you? Minnesota. Four defenders as a pick and roll. 30 to 22, the outscore Minnesota with a three on five. What's going on? Colin Sexton scored 40 points in the game, 30, uh, 28 in the second yeah. half. He had 25 of the 30 in that stretch. He was losing his mind. He was the only reason that they were in that game. He cut it within three points at one point with only three players in that team. This guy matters. Like, this is a good player. Like, that's crazy. I, to be able to make your team compete when you only have three players on the court. That's an odd one, though. That's impressive. It is impressive. And, and, and uh, it, it is odd that, you, you know, you're playing with three guys. You're going to get uh, – but it, it, it's crazy. I mean, Minnesota – Shot an abysmal percentage from the three. Right. If when Minnesota three Sexton's defenders. a good defender. Sexton is I, a good I, defender. I feel like if Minnesota lost that game, the coach wouldn't even make it to the locker room. <laughs> I feel like they'd be like, okay, well, you have to stop. You, you watch them all the things like, well, we really don't practice about that situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> obviously. But well, you got outscored. It was interesting. Three on five. I mean, obviously, on the office of Ed, all they had to do was be patient and pass a lot. You know and eventually they, 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 they will shot. allow you to play with one player. I thought it was two players. I thought, no, I thought, you, had, you, I thought you had to if, forfeit. But the referee's discretion, if they think you still have a chance to win the game, <laughs> it's true. So if it's like LeBron if they, versus if they, if the, if the refs deem that it's still a game, that the, the, the team with one player can win, they can allow the game to continue. Obviously, if it's a 25 point, the referee can say, look, yeah. one player. I, would, I always think, how would I play that? I don't understand. After the other team scores, who do you pass to on the well, inbounds? Well, you've got to target one of the other players. Wow, that's you, great. Yeah, I want to so see this. It becomes like dodgeball. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That needs to happen. You gotta, you gotta I need to see this. Somehow, some way, and, and hit somebody. They, you'd be running. They'd all be running down to the other corner of the floor. You'd be throwing it and chasing it. Could you, the, could you throw it off the rim to yourself? No, you can't. No, no you can't. It's got it's to hit tell. another player. I realize immediately as I said it. That's but, not going to happen. Anyway. Three on five was as odd yeah. as anything. The other thing I want, I want to say was um, uh, uh, Porter's brother is six eleven. And as a freshman, he hit four threes against St. John's in a victory. John Tay, um, um, uh, Porter. Yeah, was, I know, but it's pretty cool that the two brothers were going to be the same team. Um, uh, uh. It was. And he's not. He's a pretty decent player. He's not. A, he's not a draft pick. I, th I think Porter could drop in the draft process. We've seen players in the past, New Orleans Noel, players such as that and that nature, that really uh, their um, their draft stock is really put into question because of an injury history when they come into the college season being commonly accepted being the one or two player. And something that's interesting as as well, now that he has this injury under his belt, he really has uh, all the power. And he, because you, you choose who you release your medical records to. So he may deter a team like maybe the Bulls gets in the top. Oh. If he doesn't want to play with the Bulls, maybe he doesn't give them the medical records. Yeah. And so that type of thing is now it's under his control for where he may or may not land in the lottery. So he's an interesting person maybe to track can, and follow. Maybe he can get Ball for his agent and um, uh, you know how he likes to talk him up, talk him up. Yeah, I also like while we were on college hoops, we had some real good local games, and um, uh, you had uh, uh, Providence and Belmont. Belmont's a, a very underrated team, and, and they're a beautiful team where they uh, that they pass and they hit the three. And that game went down to the last. Uh, I would, they score with three seconds left, and then Providence runs up the court and hits a three on the buzzer to beat them. And it was beautiful execution on the three to put um, Belmont ahead by two. And then Providence races it down court with no time left, hits a three on the buzzer to win. And then the same day, URI beats um, uh, um, Seton Hall on the yep. buzzer with um, uh, Terrell good scoring 32 and bringing it to it. Uh, very good. I I'm uh, uh, kind of uh, I'm into Virginia again. And How are they doing? Uh, they were undefeated. They uh, they beat URI in the finals in that tournament. Who were you rooting uh, for? I was rooting for Virginia. That's I have pretty bad. That's bad. On. I know. That's I was bad. with Dan. I was with Dan and Matt. He must not. They must not have liked oh. that. Well, I was with Cassidy too, and um, uh, you know, Cassidy went to UVA, so it's um, uh, 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 that, um, uh, I was. I, I'm too. I'm too into that team not to root for Conflict them. And my guy, my guy, guy. I mean, I'm, I'm eating crow again. He was horrible, <laughs> and it was like here I am saying that guy could be the guy that could help the Celtics off the bench and. He had a bad game. I'm going to look good sometimes. I'm going to look bad sometimes. But as long as it's blasphemous it's and not ridiculous, I'll accept it. I feel like blasphemous is I don't worse. want to be ridiculous. Blasphemous is definitely a worse word. No, I just, I'd rather be blasphemous than ridiculous. Sounds like blasphemous is like, You're wearing the necklace, so you, know, you don't look that ridiculous. It's controversial. Ridiculous, it's like, eh, you're dumb. <laughs> Next All right. slot. I don't even know what we have left. We might be done with the wheel. I don't even know. 
The wheel and I are not getting along if we today. Get, if we get so. a new I thing. Think I, I'm thinking of some adjustments to the wheel in terms of blocking out the ones that are I think I think you didn't screw this thing in enough. over the Lomo uh, as they happen and then block it out and then so something else will have to come up and it'll be the closest. Like a new segment? And like a black uh, a black sticky that goes right on top of the one that you already did and then you chew and then you get the one that's closest to it. I'm unaware of any technology that would allow that but I'm in for it, I'm in for it if it exists. Uh, yeah, we can talk about D Rose and last week Holly. We'll, we'll combine them. So I touched on D Rose. Um, I think we talked about him enough to be honest. He'll, he'll be back, uh, I think, sooner than later. But it's a very un unnerving I don't situation. Think he's coming back. You think he's retiring? I think. You, I don't, don't think, think he's retiring. He's losing eighty million dollars from Adidas if he leaves from a full, from a thirteen year deal that he signed back so before his MVP season. That's the reason season. he comes back. I, I think guess, it has to but, be. Um, uh, uh, so you think his family's in his ear right now saying, look, you've got 27 people here to support, and um, uh, um, uh, we're all relying on you, and it won't be the same Thanksgiving without you and all this kind of stuff? Uh, I, I think he's really um, uh, depressed. I think he's yeah. definitely depressed. He's physical seems, and, physical and, issues have taken their toll mentally. Yes. I agree and, and he's just, yeah, and, and they keep coming back, and it's like I, I know somebody asked him, he made an, a D-Rose move, and they say, boy, that was an unbelievable move, and his response to it was, I used to do that all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can tell. It's, it's tough. It's, it's like uh, I, I try to get back into playing uh, tennis recently. I used to be a pretty good tennis player, not a phenomenal tennis player, a pretty good tennis player. Oh, you're a and it's, it's, high school level player. It's, it's very, very irritating. And I'm nowhere near as good as I am. And when you miss shots that you usually hit, it like weighs on you. And it's just like I, I know one of my good friends, Connor, uh, he's much better now. But there was a time period where he was – ace golfer in high school and there was a period where he didn't play a lot of golf out at, at of high school and then he we, i would play with him and he would be like oh this this pisses me off like i, ha I hate this yeah because it's you really like and sport. he plays a lot more so now so he's fine but like just that mentality of being at, at a level at one point and then coming back and not being able to perform near to that it, it does weigh on you and, it, and it's something that's hard to deal with and i i, I understand obviously it's a complete different scale but i mean it's, 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 un it's understandable shay's tennis career and he rose yeah NBA yeah, basketball. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went, I went undefeated. Ego is ego, though. You know, I used, I used to score at will on the basketball court. Yes. And you but see I, my I jump shot for, now. It's not even really a jump shot. I'm also rooting for him to step out because of obvious reasons. And I, I really <laughs> no, I really think that this is an He doesn't have a shot. London doesn't have a shot. He's in uniform. And he's on. Uh, you got to no face that shot. back. You started no out saying shot. that he would not even get out of the summer he league. He shouldn't have. Well, he got way out of the summer league. He's not way out. He hasn't played a minute way of the out. NBA he's game. He's in the NBA. He hasn't played a minute. He's got a two-way contract. He hasn't played a minute. Hey, a two-way contract, what does that mean? You can only play so many games in the um, um, at the um, NBA level? Or can you play, could you play the whole season? No, it's, like, it's, you can play the whole season. It's you have to play a certain amount of games. I forget what the number is. With the it. NBA team? Yes. Oh, okay, so he's going to be – he's got a two-way contract. Right. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not like you have to get on the court. It's just that you have to – And they want you got him because they, they got him from – they took him from San Antonio. Oh, no, they didn't take him. He got let go. London would be on every yes. slice. No, I'm just – I'm wheel. happy for him. And I am a UVA guy. There's no doubt about that. All right, you guys have got any highlights from the last couple of weeks? Well, Golden, I got some Golden State, Golden State fell to Oklahoma City in a blistering win by them, huh? But, All, the big three went off. Russell Westbrook had a classic yeah, performance. But, um, but more so than not, it was a defensive lockdown. Uh, the, their defense – you really can't like figure out OKC. Okay, so you never know exactly what you're going to get you with don't. Exactly. It's exactly. kind of like rolling the dice. It, it, it it's really like, oh, is. snake eyes. It is. I mean, <laughs> here's a stat on OKC. Give me it. Eight times this year, they've had double-digit leads and lost the game. Yes. Eight times they've done that. I believe that. That's, that's bad, you know? Well, and, I, I think they're, you know, Swaggy P is a good pickup for them. But maybe it's not working out quite yet. Maybe they're not P. gelling as a team. Oh, who's, who's no, the, I think um, what's the guy that they have? Nick. Uh, no, they don't have Nick. Uh, Golden, they, was Golden State picked up the. Golden State has Nick. Oh, Golden State, State, they do have. Yeah, that's Golden what I'm State saying. That, that's why it's. That's why they seem they, to they, be. They're losing games I think on OKC. I said it last week. I'll say it again. It, 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 I think they're holding Paul George back by having Carmelo on the court, and that um, Paul George <clears> plays <throat> better without Carmelo on the court, and that they're, they're, that assist ratio they've got and their crunch time assist is so low. I mean, get the ball back in Westbrook's hands and just so, have them. Um, I know they're stuck with Carmelo. So Westbrook's got to be the man. It's, it's tough. They, they, like I've said before, they need to have a pecking order, but it's unusual, and you could tell that but, Donovan's deficiencies as a coach but, are coming out of the woodworks. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what situations to put Paul George in to make him the most successful. They are still succeeding because of how elite of a defense. They have the second or They're third. They're not really succeeding. They have a second, okay, well, they have a second or third best defense in the league right now, and they have, like, the 20th um, offense. But overall, they have the sixth best 
uh, net I mean, rating. They're the last they have place in the division, and they're 8-11. They're not succeeding. They're, statistically, they project as the sixth best team in the league. They're just not converting late games. And it's just like eventually yeah, stuff is going to fall into place. Don't you yell at him about projections? Projections? Pro project yeah. at. They, I, I think that the pecking order execute. was established pretty clearly not until Carmelo. And then Carmelo forced his way. He should have accepted the third role. It's where he should have been as a third role. But no, he pushed himself to the, you he don't wants understand. to be the one guy. He no, wants he's not to the one guy. He, just because he, he takes more shots than Paul George doesn't mean he's more involved in the offense than he is Paul George. Paul George plays so much better when Carmelo's out. They, yeah, that's because the offense is stagnant and I'd, they're not being put in action. I'd successful rather have for them. Paul George at his best. The than, only thing that but, they're putting Paul George in to be involved in the offense are like wide pin downs where he's just catching the ball and he's being forced to make a quick decision offensively. They don't put him in any pick and roll as a ball handler like he did in Indiana where he performed very well. They're not putting him in as nearly as many isolation sets with, with Melo standing in the corner. Why does Melo never stand in the corner three? He would be an elite catch and shoot corner three player. I don't understand what Donovan do, is doing there. I don't understand I what agree. schemes he's putting out. He's not doing the right things with the players. He's depending too much on them to figure out themselves, and they're not going to figure is out he themselves. The he needs to on step in. Too, Don, 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 no, yeah, Presti is. Presti's a good GM. Yeah, Presti, but he nev they never should have taken no more Anthony. I, I they think they yeah, had to. I really they don't think to. they're a good team. Like, I, I think, I think That's a lot when you to get, when when you you get three, three like good that. or great players, it doesn't necessarily automatically translate to being a good team. So there I, I think the, the sum of its parts don't equal up to, like, you know, it's like the Celtics. They, they don't necessarily have the best players, players as talented as that big three in OKC, but, but the Celtics, the sum of their parts individually, are, they all work together a lot better. I just think that all three of those guys are performing very uncharacteristically for how they should in a system where the three of them together would work. I don't think that they're being put in a situation for them to succeed. I think that their performance late in the clutch I mean, I'll will be a dead horse. And uh, I think that you Russell get Westbrook, Carmelo out of there and that thing starts working. Russell Westbrook statistically, is, is his, his rebounds, his assists, and his other numbers are where they were last year. But efficiency-wise, his shooting percentage, especially from the free throw line, is nowhere near where it was last year. He's not having time to put himself into the rhythm and he's struggling because of it, and the team is struggling because of it. And Russell Westbrook is both the poison for this team and the answer, and he needs to be involved more, believe it or not. And both, I think both um, Melo and Paul George maybe need to take a step back. Paul George needs to change how he's involved, and, and uh, Carmelo needs to be involved less on the top of the offense and more as a secondary option who can still take the second most shots on the team. I don't care about the shots that he's taking. Boy, that's a lot to finesse. I, but so it, but to as the coach, he that. should be mixing things so up. So do you, have, Don, do you have Donovan on the hot seat, though? I think Donovan should be on the hot seat, but he's not. He gets so much respect for no reason. He's a bottom 10 coach in the league. He doesn't know how to work the rotations. He has. He's a, always a leader in terms of mixed lineups. He's, he's always, uh, he's, I think he's like third in the league for different rotations that he throws out there and people are like oh look how creative he is he's not creative he doesn't know what he's doing he's putting lineups that don't fit together he doesn't he doesn't understand how to mesh players uh, he doesn't that fan everything. base is blindly loyal too well I yeah it's a good fan base i like their fan base that's a good fan base but they're not they maybe stand, not the they, most they, intelligent they, fan base. from tip to first basket they stand so sometimes yeah, they're i soured on billy donovan a little bit too and i i i talk highly about him before about the two national championships and he's a good call to patino and everything he, he really is technically a, a good clinician type yes. coach. Yes. He's, he's very good in terms of good, teaching good recruiter. the game. Good recruiter. And that doesn't always translate. Really, who have you seen other than Brad Stevens that's really been able to do that? I don't know what the other examples are of uh, um, uh, uh, coaches that could come out. I like the Florida coach yesterday. That guy, uh, Mike uh, Smith, uh, um, uh, well, his, his, his father is the AD at Duke. That was really interesting. His father's the AD at Duke, and he's the head coach at Florida. I like Florida. They that's, sound like a bunch a of nobody. It's a fun style of play. <laughs> fun <laughs> style of play. Um, all right, we'll, we'll go to medals. Let's see if uh, Mike can catch me. He's got three. Let's see if Sloan can uh, get on the board at all. We got Cleveland at Philly tonight. Big game. Best net rating in the league, playing at least 100 minutes for a lineup. Okay, the lineup well, that plays I at least 100 I'm, minutes. They're I'm, first in the league. Plus 29 net rating is Saric, Embiid, Simmons, Covington, and Reddick. Best lineup Saric in the league. Saric had a good game last week. Saric, Embiid, Simmons, Covington, and Reddick are and the best lineup And they played well without Simmons, too. McConnell really played well. I like T.J. Uh, McConnell. Uh, great, he, great backup He got a lot guy. of experience last year. Uh, um, I think um, uh, Cleveland's going to win some games in a row, and I'm looking for London to get his first um, uh, minutes. And I'm, not, I'm just saying that. You are know, you a Cleveland fan now? You might be a Cleveland fan now. I will never replace the Celtics, but if London Parentheses <laughs> is playing, if yeah. If we I'll had a drinking game, drink every time Uncle Mike says London Parentheses, oh, yeah, he would be a man. 
people would be Who in you a lot got? of trouble. Well, I can't. I, I, I'm not going to get you guys to say it. I, I can't go against <laughs> You're still Cleveland. acting like he's uh, been signed to the summer league. What would this and be, you don't eight recognize that he's come up through the G League and now he's in the NBA. Philly's at home. I'm picking Philly for the win. Simmons and Embiid are going to combine for 60. Uh, Detroit at Boston. Oh, Boston. I'm, uh, Boston. I'm still can't pick against Boston. Tribute video for good game. Avery for Bradley. Soon to come. Hey, they're second in the they're second in the conference. They're, they're second and, in the conference. They're twelve and six. They're four games back. So we got a little bit they of a got cushion. a nice three guard combination when Ishmith is out there. I like, I like that. Ishmith. He's really I fast. I like him a lot. He might be the fastest player in the league. Maybe with the ball. Maybe. Well, you got you he's got Wall and you got DeAndre Fox. You know. DeAndre Fox. Yeah, he's up there though. I'm like a little that. worried about Wall's knee though. Yeah, he's, he's up for two weeks. Not good. Yeah, the Wizards are nose bombing. The NBA is better with him healthy. Uh, Dallas at San Antonio. Also tonight. San Antonio. San Antonio. I think Dallas is coming with a big upset. Oh, wow. Four three. Give me that medal. Dallas has been hot lately. Yeah, Dirk's playing. Dirk is playing much better. Yep. He's he's still a sieve defensively, but offensively he's get, he's finding his spots yeah. more than he was in Swans. He's got the right attitude. Yeah. Lakers at Clippers. Lakers. Clippers suck. Clippers have won two in a row. They're going to keep winning. <laughs> <laughs> They've won two in a row. I agree. If the Lakers win, um, uh, gee, they're, they're, they're battling for second place. Yes. Washington yeah. at Minnesota tomorrow. Min Minnesota at home. Yes, I agree. Me too, I agree. No John Wall. Washington without That's Wall. an issue. Right. Although Minnesota <laughs> was looking really sloppy against the Suns on Sunday. It was really unusual. They had the early game at 3.30. Mike James was eating them up. Uh, uh, Troy Daniels, that shooter that like came out of nowhere on uh, Houston last year, was like scoring at the rim on Carl Towns. It was, it was nerve wracking. They, they, ended, they ended up they, winning. They like the Pittsburgh Steelers. They play down yes, to the teams yes, that are yes, bad yes. and they play up mm, to exactly. the teams that are good. Exactly. Miami at Cleveland. Cleveland's going to have a win streak. I, I, I smell it. What are they already at seven? So that'll be eight. It'd be nine. nine. All right, I'll go Cleveland again. They've won seven straight. Yeah. LeBron in the fourth quarter is to force. He scores the most points in clutch time. No. Number, who's number two? I think Kyrie is. All, I well, mean, I saw a stat with Kyrie. Kyrie had scored 60, last five minutes within five points. He had yes. scored 65 points in 38 minutes with yes. no turnovers. LeBron James leads the league in clutch time moments, which is what you just said, five minutes left within five points. LeBron, but he's 65 points in 38 minutes. LeBron's done better than that with no turnovers? Well, I don't know about turnovers, but LeBron James is scoring more. LeBron has like 5.4, Kyrie has like 5.2. And then you want to know who third is? Deion Waiters. Okay. The next player isn't even close. Those three are okay. those three are far and above okay. separated from everyone else. Uh, Washington at Philly. Dion gets some uh, Philly. lucky bounces though. Oh, he's he's <laughs> that lucky bounce against Boston was he also had crazy. A crazy bomb swish. That was preposterous. Uh, Philly, please. Okay, I agree. Minnesota at the Pelicans. Minnesota. Uh, I'll go. I've been going home team. I, that's I'll how go, I got my win streak. I'll I go with stay the Pelicans the on that one. I'm really liking what I'm seeing at uh, Anthony Davis lately. He stepped it up before Co Cousins was the bell cow of that offense early, but now it's shifting back, and both of them are playing well. Loser. Also, Rondo's back. He doesn't have to seem a, a good effect on winning so, yet, but I like what I'm seeing in terms of the offense and how it moves when he's on the floor. Drew Holiday seems to be sitting in to a off-ball guard role better than I was expecting. It's been a while since Rondo played, so give him some yes, time. Yes, it has. Exactly. My thoughts exactly. Uh, Philly at Boston on Thursday. I will be at that game. Ooh, you're going to be at the Philly game. Oh, Boston that's going. awesome. some good games coming Who up. Who are you going with? I'm going with Connor. Wow. Good game. That's, a, that's Connor, an awesome you game. you can go. Just let me know. All right. I got to go Boston at home. I don't, I'm don't. i picking Boston, I told you, every game this season. Same. <laughs> Milwaukee at Port Portland. Portland. Uh, ben predicted uh, Damian Lillard to get like 50 and 60 points. He didn't. He had like 30. McCollum had a, like a 1 for 14 game last week. But he also won him a game uh, okay. two nights ago. He had three shots in the last minute. They had, they had one game where they both had um, uh, And who's that third scorer? The, 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 the big guy, right? I think they, all, I think they had almost Nurkic. 90 Nurkic. points between the three Nurkic. of them. Nurkic. Yeah, yeah, I got to go Portland again. Uh, Indiana at Toronto. Toronto's sliding, but I, I, I'm going to go with the home team. I'm going to go with Toronto. Toronto. They haven't been playing as well as I they were go last Toronto week. Too. This, this is some Casey's tough, not this happy is some with tough How many times does Lance Stevenson carry the ball a game? He's got to be the most in the league. He carries the ball every single time he dribbles. Is that even still a rule? He like high steps. It's ridiculous. I never see it. All right, Sacramento calls. at Chicago, the poop bowl. Ugh. Oh, it's hard to pick Chicago. I got to go Sacramento. Chris Dunn is playing as bad as he played at Providence. I like, I like Chicago has turned into one of the worst teams of all time. You got the Kings? I'm going to take the Kings. I think they're making a mistake. Minnesota at OKC. Okay, see? <laughs> Sound very uh, confident. Nah, there's no confidence there. Who got? M Minnesota. Okay, I picked them as well. Uh, Pelicans at Portland. Portland. 
Okay. Boogie yep. doesn't travel well. Does it travel well? Portland. What does that mean? <laughs> Orlando at New York. Second to last game. We all LeBron want James travels well. Yes, I agree. But you see what New York's road record is one and six? Yeah, they're bad. They're a bad team. What is so it? Orlando at New York. Orlando at New York. Camp is back. I, I, I'm, uh, I didn't like how Orlando played against the Celtics. I'm going to go with New York. New York. I'll go Orlando. I picked Orlando as well. Last game, the Spurs at OKC. Spurs, I'm baby. I'm at I'm going to go with the home team on that one. I'm going to go with OKC. Spurs, OKC. All right. We'll see how we fare. Maybe we'll slow get on the board. Maybe not. Who knows? Fingers crossed. Uh, that's all we got. I'm going to enjoy the game. What, what do you got coming up this week? Anything to look forward to? Games to watch, maybe? Well, a lot. There's, um, uh, Virginia's playing Wisconsin um, okay, uh, Wisconsin. tonight. Okay. And we got the Celtics and Pistons at the same does, time. Does Wisconsin so. have an annoying white guy, big white guy? Because they usually do. Um, I'm sure they I'm sure they will. Um, they haven't won all. Uh, they've lost games, but I'm looking forward to that game tonight. All right, we'll see. Uh, I hope they get into the top 25. That was released at 3 o'clock. I didn't check it. Nah, I, I, got, I think Virginia got into the top 25. Well, we'll see. Fingers crossed. That really matters. All right, thanks for joining us on the Mile House. We'll see you next week. Adios.